for. So for this stream, I'm going to be talking all about why you might feel disconnected to your crystals. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever felt like, you know, I just am not feeling a particular crystal the same way I used to. It's not working for me anymore how it once did where you feel like, you know, what is going on? Is it something with me? Is there something wrong with my stone? And this can be a huge hurdle when you're getting started working with crystals and crystal energy, because you might not understand what has changed. So if you've ever found yourself asking that question, why won't my stones work anymore? Why do they suddenly feel a little differently than they used to? Here's what I can tell you from my own personal experience. Just because your crystals didn't work <laughs> or because they felt differently this time, it doesn't mean that they won't work for you again in the future. So just because this has happened once, don't panic. It's not suddenly like everything is wrong and you'll never be able to connect with your crystals again. There are lots of things that you can do to get your crystal connection back, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But let's talk about first why this might happen in the first place. It could be that, you know, maybe you just picked a time to work with your stones where you were feeling a bit drained, not really up to working with your crystals, a bit unfocused or scattered. And sometimes it's necessary when we're feeling that way, instead of trying to like push through our fatigue or our exhaustion to just take a little step back, get some rest, um, take time to kind of recover your energy so that you can be more present for the work that you're doing. Your crystals are still likely working kind of behind the scenes to support you energetically, even if you can't sense them. So just have a little trust in the process, um, but also know it's not unusual or uncommon for that to happen if we're not in the right space to be able to connect with our stones, that we're just not picking up on what's going on. You might also just experience times where you don't really feel like working with your crystals, right? You just go, I'm just not feeling it right now. That is also okay. It doesn't make you any less of a crystal worker, any less of a crystal lover. We all just have those times where even the things that really lift us up and make us feel good and support us just don't resonate. And it's okay to know that that's just going to happen sometimes. It's part of a natural ebb and flow. Sometimes you just have to trust that there's a good reason why you're not really feeling called to work with your stones and not being drawn to work with them can also be kind of a message from your inner guidance that it's not the right time. So, you know, sometimes we just have other things we have to have our attention or focus on and that's okay. <clears throat> so when this happens, my advice is to take a step back, allow yourself some time to kind of naturally get back into your groove, maybe start again once you feel ready by adding a piece of crystal jewelry into your routine. This is a really simple and often overlooked way to work with our crystals. It's so uh, much simpler just when you're starting your day to pick a piece of jewelry to put on. For example, today, um, I have a few things. I have some red spinel. I have some star rubies and I have some citrine. Um, and this is just, you know, one way to work with your stones in a really easy way. It doesn't take a lot of um, active participation, right? Choose your crystals that you're going to wear and just kind of let them be in your energy field. It's simple and it's a good way to kind of get the ball rolling again, especially if you're just feeling a bit of burnout or exhaustion and something that feels really elaborate, just feels like too much. Just kind of getting dressed during the day can be a good way to kind of get things started again. You can also just choose a stone to carry around in your pocket um, and, you know, keep this stone with you for a few days. Let the energy kind of build slowly rather than changing it every single day like you might with your jewelry. A pocket stone is a good way to build a little bit of a deeper connection. Just kind of let yourself be in the flow. That's the most important thing. Don't feel like you have to force the connection if you're not feeling it. Let it sort of rekindle over time. Sometimes the universe just asks us to take break from things and that's okay. And it can include, again, those things that we love, the things that are important to us. And it's okay just to kind of accept that when you're in that, when it comes. But I do want to say, even after saying all of this, and giving you a little reassurance that this happens to all of us, including myself, 
The most important thing when you're working with your crystals is that you really listen to your own inner guidance and that you're true to what you need. So that means if you feel like you should reconnect with your stones, it's time to reconnect with your stones, even if you haven't been for a while, um, but you're just having a little trouble getting back into the swing of things, then you might want to try some new ways of connecting with their energy. Uh, so I have a couple tips to help you get started if you've been feeling a little bit disconnected. So the first tip to reconnecting with your crystals is to get back to basics. Sometimes when we've been working with our stones for a while, uh, we forget that we need to keep practicing even those basic techniques for working with our crystals, right? Just because we may have um, done something really well in the past, it's kind of like exercising. If you stop doing it for a long time, if you're, you know, kind of taking a step back for a while, you need to get back in there and, and kind of build that muscle again. So it's okay to go back to some of those most basic techniques for tuning into crystal energy. So if you're feeling disconnected from your crystals or you're having a hard time sensing their energy, some basic hand sensitivity exercises with them can be really helpful. And my favorite one of these exercises uses just a clear quartz crystal. This is super simple. So I like to start by rubbing my palms together to kind of activate the energy and sensitivity in my hands, and then start by putting a crystal point in my right hand. And it doesn't worry, matter if this is your dominant or non-dominant hand, we're going to use both. So just start with your right hand, have your crystal point, hold it in your hand. And in your left hand, you're going to take the termination of your crystal and point the termination toward the palm of your hand. And you're going to be just about an inch or so away and make small, tight, clockwise circles. You don't want to be touching your skin. So you're about an inch and away. You're going to make those small circles over the palm of your hand. Maybe you wanna close your eyes and do some deep breathing and see if you can feel that. Then stop, maybe rub your hands together again to kind of reset and then do counterclockwise circles. And what this does is just helps you learn to sense and pick up on that energy. Now, once you've done that, you're going to reset and switch hands. So now hold the crystal point in your left hand with the termination toward your right palm and go with those, oh, I can definitely feel that one, those clockwise circles, reset, and then those counterclockwise circles. And again, this is about going back to the basics. This is a really good way working with the clear quartz, which is a great amplifier of energy. So it really helps us kind of pick up on those subtle vibrations from the crystals and, and the palms of your hands. Um, this is just, again, that idea of kind of getting back to some of the most basic fundamentals of learning to sense energy. And this is really, really helpful. Doing this a few times a day can help you enhance your ability to sense subtle energy, not just from your crystals, but from your energy body, from your clients, whatever kind of work you're doing. Um, the second tip I wanna give you is to keep your crystals top of mind. And there are two parts that we're going to talk about when it comes to this. I've often found in my crystal journey that I feel most disconnected from my stones when I'm not actively engaging my senses with them. So there's more to connecting with your crystals than just sensing their energy by holding them or working with your hands. Okay. That's probably one of the most common ways, but it's important to know not the only way. And we're all different when it comes to sensing energy. So try keeping some stones front and center in your space. I have crystals all over my space. And I know if you have little ones or pets, this can be hard, keep them out of reach, but just have a few at least out in your space where you can see them, where you can feel their energy around you just by having them in your environment. This really helps keep your desire to connect top of mind. It helps keep their presence in your awareness, right? Because there's that out of sight, out of mind thing. And when we can see them, when we can connect with them regularly, it just helps us take a moment to pause. So anytime you see that crystal, just pause, take a breath, see if you can connect with its energy. You're much more likely to work with your crystals regularly when they're readily available than if they're tucked away in storage. This is another really good um, reason for having them out in your space. But when I say keep your crystals top of mind, 
there's kind of a second meaning to this as well. Many years ago, there was an amazing tarot reader who did readings out of my shop, Mimosa Books and Gifts in Madison, Wisconsin. And she told me when we were talking about crystal energy that she always found it really challenging to feel her crystals in her hands. But she found that if she held them atop her head, she could tune right in. And that was such a new thing for me. And I'm so glad that we had that discussion because it helped me realize we all feel crystals and we all feel energy in different ways. So I have this absolutely beautiful lapidolite, this gorgeous gemmy lapidolite. And, you know, maybe for some of us, we feel them in our hands. Maybe you feel it better over your heart or like the tarot reader who used to work out of my shop. Maybe holding it above your head really helps you kind of tune in. There's no right or wrongs here. So have a little bit of fun. Allow yourself to play a little bit if you're learning to reconnect with your crystals. And just know that we're all going to feel these crystals in a different way. We all have different intuitive gifts. So it makes sense that some methods of sensing energy will come more naturally for some or be more challenging for others depending on how we experience and interpret the energy around us. So give this a try. Try holding it on your head, over your heart, and see how you can, how you tune in that way and how it's different than when you hold a stone in your hands. You might pick up on totally different things, even with the same crystal. My third tip for reconnecting with crystal energy is to sleep on it. And again, this kind of has a double meaning. The first is pretty easy sleep on it, you know, give up for the evening, try again tomorrow. Because again, if you're in a place of exhaustion or overwhelm, or you're feeling a bit scattered or unfocused, you may find it's a little bit more difficult to really tune in on your crystals. So allow yourself some time to rest, reset and try again tomorrow. But the second meaning is quite literal. I literally mean sleep on your stones. So if you're having trouble connecting with your crystals in your day-to-day -day life, it could be that your conscious mind is feeling a little bit cluttered or unfocused, and you're having a hard time tuning into the specific energy of your stone. It could feel really challenging. So to switch things up, rather than trying to do this more consciously, let your subconscious kind of step in to help. So before you go to bed at night, I want you to take your chosen crystal with you, hold it in your hands or over your heart or above your head for a few moments and focus as much as you can on your desire to tune into that crystal's energy. Then take your stone and if it's small and not too pointy or fragile, you could tuck it in your pillowcase, like if it's a tumbled stone or if it's something a little bit bigger or a cluster or something like that, just place it on your bedside table and then make yourself comfortable do whatever you need to do as you normally go to sleep. And as you're drifting off to sleep, do your best to keep your mind focused on the intention to connect with your stone. And when you wake up in the morning, try to remember to be as still as possible. This is the key. You might've experienced this, you know, when it comes to uh, dreaming or dream work, if you wake up in the morning and you reach for a notepad right away to write down your dreams, that action of a lot of movement, um, you lose some of that memory of, of what you experienced in your dream. So try to be as still as possible. Try to keep your eyes closed and think back about any dreams that you might've had um, and what messages those may be bringing from your crystal companion. What is your crystal trying to tell you about working with it based on that dream that you had? Alternatively, if you're not someone who dreams very much or you don't really remember your dreams, when you're still in this kind of liminal space between the dream world and the waking state, think about that stone and how you're feeling. Uh, where do you feel its energy in your body right now? How are you feeling emotionally? Um, in what ways are you able to pick up on the energy of that crystal? And try and tune into it as much as you can while you're in that kind of in-between space. And then when you feel ready, reach for your stone and once again, hold it in your hands, hold it over your heart, hold it above your head and tune into it as much as you can. And then if you have a few minutes extra in the morning, jot down any thoughts or feelings or experiences that you had in your crystal journal. So these are my three favorite ways to kind of reconnect with crystal energy. If you've been feeling that disconnect, 
The most important thing you can do though, is to make any of these exercises more successful by giving them some time. So this isn't like a one and done thing, especially if you've been feeling really disconnected, try working with the same stone for at least two weeks. And you can even mix and match these exercises to connect with the crystal in different ways, but give it a couple weeks to really tune in and see what insights you're able to gather from your crystals. So I hope that helps if you've been feeling a little bit disconnected from your stones. And again, I want to reassure you, this happens to all of us from time to time. It's totally normal. So don't worry about that at all. Um, and just know that, you know, it takes some time to reconnect and it's a relationship that you have to rebuild. So I hope that you gain some insight. If you want more information on this topic, head over to my website. I put a link here in the description for the video to check out this week's blog post and podcast episode. And if you want to be sure to subscribe to my podcast so you can tune in and never miss a future episode, head over to loveandlightschool.com slash listen. I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, crystal blessings.